Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf and weekly download episode number 137. On today's episode, I don't have enough footage of Mordhau yet, so I'm going to be playing some Forza Horizon 4 when I give you this news. I got my jug of water right here. Make sure you guys let me know in the comment section what you're sipping on. Let's get into it. Before we get into it though, let me quickly pay some bills. NordVPN is one of the highest rated VPNs or virtual private networks that allow you to browse the internet privately, securely, and with no history logs whatsoever. It's super easy to use, all you do is select which server from around the world you want to connect to and you're done. Enjoy clutch features like double VPN protection for extra security, an internet kill switch for the very rare time the VPN disconnects, super fast peer-to-peer -peer downloads, and unlimited bandwidth for just above 3 bucks a month if you sign up for 2 years. I actually signed up for a year of NordVPN at full retail price way before they hooked me up with a referral link and a discount code for you guys, so I obviously recommend them as my go-to VPN service. Head on over to nordvpn.com slash Zach or click the first link in the description to learn more. To kick off the tech news for the week, we got some juicy information that Nvidia may possibly be already working on a refresh of their Turing-based RTX cards to compete with the much-anticipated Navi GPUs. Red Gaming Tech is the source of the rumor, so I have no idea how legit that is, but I can definitely see Nvidia pulling something like this off. Sure, I just spent $1300 on my RTX 2080 Ti and within a year Nvidia is going to knock it down the tone and pull a bit. I honestly don't even think they have to do this, Navi GPUs are going to launch and with some slight price changes Nvidia will be perfectly fine, but we shall wait and see I guess. Speaking of AMD, now that we are less than a couple of weeks away from the official debut of AMD's Zen 2 base 3000 series CPUs, the leaks are coming in and this time it's a 12 core variant with apparently higher IPC versus the Threadripper 1920X. The leak comes in the form of an engineering sample, which definitely sounds likely, and the information in the article, which I have linked down in the description, shows off what apparently looks like pretty decent IPC improvements. This isn't anything new, honestly, but we've all been so excited for this 16 core to launch, and we haven't really talked about the other possibilities, such as a 12 core. Hashtag RIP quad core processors. Circling over to the Intel news, you've probably already seen this unless you've been living under a rock this week, but security researchers have revealed that there's a new vulnerability that's apparently bigger than Spectre which is pretty serious. This new vulnerability allows for a process called MDS attacks or microarchitectural data sampling and this will allow the leak of quote unquote secure data. A lot of information floating around this week is indicating that we should disable hyper threading on these affected Intel CPUs which will prevent the exploits but Intel is actually disagreeing with that recommendation. This new vulnerability is also affecting pretty much every consumer Intel chip that most of us are rocking. For me personally I would recommend not freaking out about it yet, this is still just now reaching the surface and I'm sure by next week we'll get some much better information from Intel about what to do about it. For now, use common sense when downloading and scan all executable files on your PC with a virus scanner or even a web utility such as VirusTotal. In some even more serious vulnerability news this week, Microsoft released a critical update that fixed a huge security flaw in systems all the way back to Windows XP and Server 2008. This vulnerability is related to Windows Remote Desktop Services, an apparently attack is possible that requires no user interaction and it's pre-authentication which is pretty scary. This means that the vulnerability is warmable and this could spread just like the WannaCry malware did a couple of years ago. People that are rocking older operating systems such as Windows 7 and Server 2008 should definitely hit that Windows Update button before it's too late and Microsoft thinks that this is so serious that they even patched up Windows 2003 and Windows XP which is absolutely crazy. Next up you guys may remember when the Steam Link app launched on Android but got halted on iOS. Well now months and months later Steam Link is officially out for iPhone and Apple TV. Steam was rejected last year by the App Store and I actually remember being super upset about this and it's pretty ridiculous just how long it took to get approved. Steam Link allows you to stream your main gaming PC through your network and onto your phone and I definitely want to hear from you guys if you want to see a video about this anytime soon. And to wrap up the tech news for the week, the OnePlus 7 Pro is now officially released and even though we got a ton of leaks about it, people seem pretty dang excited for this new phone. From what I've been reading and seeing, the OnePlus 7 Pro is blazing fast and has a super crisp be AMOLED 90Hz screen which definitely competes with some much more expensive flagship phones on the market. Getting into the PC gaming news for the week and by far my favorite article for this episode, Blizzard announced a few days ago that while Classic has a launch date of August 27th and the high tier streamers actually started streaming the beta this week. You guys know by now that I absolutely cannot wait for WoW Classic and at the time of this episode releasing we are only 101 days away. Also in more WoW news, the Blizzard president says that after the vanilla server goes live, 
there's definitely still hope that they release Burning Crusade and Wrath of the Lich King servers in the future as well. Now, in my opinion, this decision is definitely going to rely heavily on the results of the WoW Classic servers, and since I really want this to happen, I really hope that people are as excited about WoW Classic as me, and hopefully we don't get bored of it after the nostalgia takes its course. Next up, there's a couple of free games that I want to quickly talk about, the first one being Steep, and this one is free to pick up and keep forever over on the Uplay store until May 22nd. Steep is an extreme sports game where you can snowboard down the wintry mountains, and I remember the graphics being pretty good, and I believe it got some pretty good reviews when it first came out a couple of years ago. The second free game of the week is the first Witcher game, and this one is free to pick up over on GOG. Apparently, you'll need to download the GOG Galaxy Client, sign up for a GOG newsletter, and add Gwent to your library, but after that, the game is yours to keep forever. Well, that wraps up weekly download episode number 137. As always, drop a comment down below about what your favorite news was this week, or if I missed anything. And after that, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet, and definitely hit that subscribe button, because coming up next, yet another gaming PC build guide. You don't want to miss that video.